What was that you said? Two budget besties, two weeks in a row? Bestie, I am treating you. Hiya, bestie. Today we are dipping our toes into a budget bestie for someone who has very different circumstances to myself. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Budget bestie is a series where people anonymously submit their budgets to me. I take a look at them and see what I might do if I was in their situation. This is not financial advice. However, sometimes I can offer a little tidbit of what I might do and where my priorities might be. The real knowledge, however, comes from the comment section down below. So if you believe I am doing something wrong or you would do something different or you'd even tweak it a little bit, please sound off because your voice is so important. Now this scenario today has sort of two different ways that we could go. So we're actually going to do two different options. But first we need to get into the scenario so let's get cracking. So their main financial goal is to be debt free and more financially secure. I want to afford a fertility a treatment. So when somebody submits a budget bestie to me, I ask them loads and loads of questions. And one of them is, what is your main financial issue? So what they said is, I've recently accrued a debt due to urgent work needed on my home. My boiler needed replacing, but I had enough in savings. Roof needed replacing and I had to take out a loan. Further building work was necessary after that was replaced and has resulted in the whole kitchen needed to be replaced. They have had a run of really, really bad luck, bestie. This has taken more of my savings and a new credit card and a second loan to replace the windows. So we're here with my stunning paycheck bill tracker. This is a pad, it is 25 of them on the sheet. Really good for making scratch budgets because if you make a mistake, you can just tear it off and start again. This one's getting a bit low because we do these very, very often, but let's get cracking. Uh, starting with income. So this person's income up here, income, I think I'm gonna give you a better angle so you can see it, is 3018 uh, in total. Okay, let's get a better angle. This will just have to do. So we've got quite a lot of bills. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fast forward through them now and maybe just talk you through them. Okay, so the bills are mortgage, council tax, car payment, gas and electric, water, internet, TV license. They've got a good phone deal. So they're obviously a SIM only, it's 14 pound seven. Then they have subscriptions like Spotify and Netflix. NHS is their prescription service. And then they have a car service payment plan breakdown cover and then they have car tax and it's important to know about those because uh, when we get to the sinking fund section it'll make a bit more sense. So we're back here and a couple things to notice is that they've got really good rates on the, like their mortgage and their council tax and things like that. They've got here a car payment which is like where they owe for their car. They're not classing that as a debt so we're not going to class it as a debt either and that's something that I've done in my life as well. So their internet is a really really nice price, their phone is a really nice price as I've mentioned. So, I mean, there's not many holes you can pick into that other than like getting rid of some subscriptions, but you know, it is what it is. This comes up to, if you can see, 145834, which leaves them with 1559. Uh, 66. So, so far looking good until we start getting like into it. So envelopes, they say that they only spend on groceries each month. It's just them. Uh, Groceries is 200 and dog food is a whole big thing. So I think they've got like a big rare breed. Um, so she costs 100. Spending, they give themselves 100 pounds. And it's really nice to see that spending is already worked into the budget. That makes me really, really happy. Then they have like some social money for the month, uh, 50. I mean, I would probably want more than that if I was doing stuff. And then they have a petrol fund. So petrol each month is 100. So that comes up to 550, uh, which leaves them with 1,096. So going back to the form, it says, I live alone with no children, just one dog who is a German shepherd who eats a lot. And okay, now that makes sense while they're doing £100 a month on food for just for the dog. They got no other debt other than the mortgage and car finance, but not currently a priority to be debt free. I have 3300 in savings. I don't want to use this to pay down debt as I want to keep this a buffer just in case I want to build it up when I can. I still do pay £50 each month and have £20 uh, lifetime ISA a month. I had plenty Plan to use the savings to have fertility treatment this year and want to get this plan back on track as well but I'm already 36 and this now feels unachievable. I really don't like that thought of I'm 36 so um, this whole life-changing thing of like having fertility treatment can't happen. It it bloody well can. They say that you shouldn't really do it past 42 but you still can so it gives you a lot of years so don't don't sort of don't say that. <laughs> 
you can definitely do this if you want to. But we're going to take a look at two different options anyway. So let's go back to this. So they list a load of sinking funds. So um, haircut they list uh, and they say that's £60 every three months. So let's just do 20 Then they have vet bills and um, they say the vet bills are there because their pet is not insured. So I assume that she is uninsurable. I don't know if that's a thing, but if she is insurable, I'd certainly take a look at that. And then we've got car insurance. So car insurance there. So car insurance is about £50 a month and they don't have their car insurance listed here. So I think they like to pay it like in a year rather than every month. Then they have car tax. So that's there. That's £15 a month. But if you look, they also have car tax here. So it looks like they're paying it every month, but they're looking to pay it in a year, which is fine. Then they have home insurance there. Um, home insurance which they do about 17 pounds and then Christmas um, Christmas is 40 so um, other than haircut these ones here is how much they would like to do so they're not actually committing that to it right now but I've put it in anyway because that's what it is um, and then they'd also like to include two more so home appliances um, which they currently have zero and they have no plans to put anything into that and also no that was home maintenance that's home and maintenance home maintenance and then appliances so they're both zero right so remember in that last bit they said that they put 50 pounds towards savings as well so that's savings and then they have their lifetime isa they do 20 pounds a month so that's all of their sinking funds and that seems a pretty robust approach there's nothing really there for birthdays and stuff like that but it's a pretty robust approach is what i'd say that all comes up to 247 pounds which leaves them with 762.66 so let's move over to the deck section up here because um, she's relatively intense so let's see what she says about that so they have credit card one which is 101 pounds 45 which will be paid off in full on the next payday so we don't need to really look at that and then they've got a couple of other ones with minimums they've got interest that they've calculated as well so okay let's get into this so credit card so credit card two so we're not gonna think about the other credit card is 115 and then they have loan one and the minimum on that is 163.33 then they have loan two which they're not asking for a minimum at the moment so that's zero uh, but it will eventually they will want some money that comes up to 278.33 which leaves them with 484.33 so based off of what we know right now the buffer is 484.33 so if we go back to what their goal was, it was to be debt free and more financially secure. Full stop. I want to afford fertility treatment. So there's two different ways to look at it and it's up to the individual which road they go down. I certainly believe that both are possible, but are they both possible right at the same time sometimes where you put all of your money into two things you spread it a little bit thin and you don't necessarily achieve either one very well so sometimes it's appropriate to just focus on one of those goals just to make sure that that one happens so for me in my head i'm thinking i'm 36 i want to be a parent fertility treatment is important to me you've got time you've definitely got time but your time gets shorter and shorter every year that you don't invest in that whereas debt will always be there you can pick that up afterwards or is the burden of having debt more important to you to get rid of the last thing i would want is for you to go down a road of being debt free and all of a sudden you're like 45 you have no debt and you regret your choice so i'm going to do two different scenarios number one would be to become debt free and number two would be to pursue fertility treatment because i believe that currently with this income that I wouldn't necessarily be able to find a way to make both happen. So let's do both. So we've got the yellow pen and we're going to move in. So the things that I don't really mind is all of this. I think all of this makes perfect sense. And actually, I believe that these envelopes 
are really, really like nice envelopes, nice amounts. I like these sinking funds too, so I wouldn't necessarily make too much change to them. The only thing I'd do is just the car tax. I'd just get rid of it. Like it's working out paying it like every month anyway. So I'd just change that. It leaves you to change that to 232, which leaves you with 77766. So in this scenario, the yellow scenario, we are focusing on paying down debt. So we're going to work in an overpayment to get this done. So let's have a look at what a overpayment let's work out what that would be. So I do an overpayment of 471.67, which meant that you're throwing, <coughs> excuse me, this means that you're throwing 750 pounds every month to debt to get rid of it. It leaves you with 27.66, which leaves you with 27.66. Okay, so let's talk about what this will look like. Let's go to the back of this bit of paper and let's talk about a debt repayment plan. So we're not going to list the debts necessarily in order of the debt snowball because some of them have no interest for a really, really long time and some of them are a bit more pressing than the other. So the first one that I would list is credit card two. So credit card two, that how much we owe on that is 4,545 and the minimum is 115, right? So total and minimum. Then we have loan one. So loan one we owe 9790 and our minimum is 163.33 and then loan two is the one with zero percent interest so while it is the smallest one at 3720 so technically it should go first we're not going to accrue interest so if we worked on this one first this one's only going to get bigger so the kind of no point so the minimum on that is zero so we've already worked out that the minimum the additional payment that we want to do is 471.67 which means that we're throwing at debt this first debt 586.67 so if we did that every single month we'd have this one paid off in eight months now that does seem quite a long time compared to especially the other budget besties that we've done but this is a significant amount of money at a significantly high debt right so eight months really grand scheme of things that's very very quick so once that one's paid off when we pay the 586.67 to the 166.33 that becomes the full snowball already of 750 which means this debt is gone in 13 months so just in a little over a year 9,790 is completely gone. So once that is gone, we've got 750 to throw at this loan too, which means that this one's gone in five months. So in total, we are debt free in 26 months, which is two years, two months. So you could argue that after that, you could start your you know journey with fertility, but do you wanna lose out on those two years? It's, it's a completely personal call, like completely personal. So in this scenario with this one, we can be debt free in two and a half years time and then we can do whatever we want with our life. Like that's absolutely achievable, especially because we've got a nice salary and it's completely achievable. But let's bring out an orange pen and let's see what it might look like if we went down a different road. So in this scenario, we are not really paying too much attention to debt. We are working in a small overpayment just to make sure we stay on top of the interest, but we're expecting the debt to be with us for a long time, right? But we are focusing more on uh, becoming a parent or, you know, doing all of the bits that we need to do to make us happy, right? So first thing I would do is still keep this the same, still keep this the same. I would still get rid of that car tax, but I'd also change the amount of savings, right? So we'll come back to that one in a sec, but instead of an overpayment of 471.67, I'd do 121 67 which means that we're putting 400 pounds to debt so when we're putting 400 pounds to debt we're putting about just over half so instead of taking two years it probably take four years maybe four and a half to five considering how much interest might be but this person seems quite savvy with figuring out the best accounts to move it into zero percent places so we'll be doing 400 there we'll be um then putting 353 uh into savings uh, as well as that 50 right so if we're using that 50 for something else and this 353 is just for fertility treatment, this is how much it might 
cost, right? So 353, when we save that for one year, that becomes 4,236, right? Not necessary enough for, you know, the Cadillac version of fertility treatment, but a lot can be done on that. When we do it for two years, it is 8,472. When we do it for three years, it is 12,708. When we do it for four years, it is 16,944. So we can get a lot done with just saving 353 pounds, right? So if we are putting 353 to uh, that journey, it means that our sinking funds are 600 pounds, leaves us with 409.66. And then when we're putting 400 pounds to there, we're left with 966. So both scenarios are available in both options. It's really, really important to remember that budgets are super, super personal and some people are comfortable holding on to debt if it allows them to achieve their life goals. So for me, debt felt stifling. It was the last thing I thought about before I went to bed. It was the first thing I thought about when I woke up and it was completely stifling. But if I was in a position where I wanted a family and it cost me money to make that family materialize it debt certainly wouldn't even be a single factor to me so considering that and considering that you know there's loads of different ways there's also i haven't even considered an emergency fund but as we said we've got a lot of savings to rely on so technically that might be the emergency fund because this person did say that they do use that to rely on i'd love to know what you would do in the comments down below Hi guys, guys, and I'm Pass. Thank you so much for getting through to the end of the video. You know I love it when you get through to the end of the video. Please give this video some love. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you are going to comment, please use this emoji. What do you think of today's video? I think it was a bit of a contentious one. And it's because it's difficult because I've never been in that situation. Potentially that could happen to me one day. Potentially I could be like in my like 40s, 50s and want to make a family. And I'm, I'm, it's probably going to be something that I'm going to have to pay for because... Bestie, I'm not knocking up anybody anytime soon. <laughs> It just goes to show that some people just don't have things easy and sometimes they get, you know, really, really far with their journeys and things like their boiler breaking down and then their ceiling having to be fixed. Like things happen one after the other and it just sets them back ages. But with, you know, really, really laser focus, you can get yourself back on your feet and get yourself to having your dreams like relatively simply. I wish this person the best of luck and I'd love to know how you get on. Have you considered becoming a channel member or a patron? Patrons get exclusive content sneak peeks and significant discounts off my Etsy store. Channel members get early access to every single video. In fact, they've seen this video long before you have, Bestie. Okay, that's gonna be the last budget, Bestie, for a while. I know people love them, but they do get the fewer views, but I am committed to keep on, on doing them, but I thought I'd give you two in a row and it's gonna be a hiatus for a little bit, Bestie. But until the next budget, Bestie, I would like you to have a wonderful day, have a wonderful week, and have a wonderful budget. Always remember, don't trust Ira. And best thing, I'll leave you with the budget bestie playlist. Have a look through this. If there's any of them that you missed, give it a cheeky view, give it a cheeky comment. Let me know what you would do in that situation.